I think I'm back. Just sitting back up. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Just lost power for a moment there. Just a brief moment, of course. I think we're getting we're getting there. Just getting everything all set up again. I think I'm up and going. Looks like I'm up and going. Hee. <laughs> Again, but I, I did, unfortunately, lose the five minutes of work <laughs> that I had. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Um, that was just, you know, the men in black trying to shut me down. You know, they try to shut me down, you know, every couple of months. So, when I tell them, you better not, you better not, and, you know, it happens. So, again, this is a new character that I just started kind of developing in my free time. Oh, <laughs> the lizard people. It was the friggin' lizard people. It's always the lizard people. So we'll have to bear and grin it to get everything going again. All sorted again. <laughs> yes, there, Joe. You're absolutely right. <laughs> That's exactly what's going on. Is they're very interested in what is going through my mind right now. <laughs> hey, David. Mike, how's it going? Hello? So the things that I'm doing in this um, is just using very simple primitives and I'm just blocking out kind of the core silhouette shapes. Not necessarily worrying about um, too much right now. Just loose. Um, that's not true. I'm actually worrying a little bit about kind of angles and flow of things like I'm already trying to get a bit of a curve there I trust that I'm doing well yes there's some cool stuff I've been uh, very very busy the past 
two months. Um, so, in, uh, yeah, yeah, doing very well. Um, we have, I have a big, I mean, the Lightbox Expo. I don't know if you guys know about the Lightbox Expo. But the Lightbox Expo, which is an expo of artists and people from, you know, game and film and animation, um, are doing, are having this really cool um, expo. And, you know, it's put on by Bobby Chu, who's, who's awesome, really nice guy. Um, I was able to be on his podcast um, for an interview at last month. Um, really, really awesome, nice guy. Very down to earth. I like, and, and he's been putting on this, this light box expo and I've never been to an expo before. Like I've been to many expos, but I haven't ever tabled at one. I've always like gone as a participant, like as a, either a presenter or, um, as just someone walking around and being like, oh my gosh, I love your art. Uh, but I have never actually tabled at one. So this is a whole new world where I had to like prepare. Like, well, what am I gonna, <laughs> what am I gonna do at this? <laughs> what am I gonna do at this thing? <laughs> Was kind of like my what. <laughs> what am I doing? Um, so it's been, it's been really busy. It's been really good to kind of focus on, on some concrete goals and a timeline. So I've been working on a new ZBrush tutorial that is heavily focused with, um, hard surface modeling and the Z modeler brush and also 3d printing that should be coming out. Uh, hopefully next week before the Lightbox Expo. Um, and I'll also be a part of a, of a panel that's going on there with 3D artists, which is a lot of fun. Um, with Justin Goey Fields and um, Angie, I'm blinking on her last name she's she's amazingly talented 3d artist um rafael rafael Grisel, Grisetti. um he he's you know everyone knows his work his amazing work yeah he'll be a part of the panel as well um, i'm also doing a, a presentation character demo there so it's it's going to be a busy weekend it's going to be a lot of fun Marty, yes. Oh yeah, it's the Lightbox Expo is gonna be it's gonna be crazy cool. I mean, I, I don't know if anyone imagined how big it would be just in its first year because it's it is huge. Um, what am I? Um, what am I, what is being worked on? So this is a character that I just started sketching around with the other day and I'm just kind of feeling it out. This is more the, the concept phase. So I'm just seeing, you know, proportions. Um, this will be very rough. You know, I, I think I, I got to a point with my last sculpt that I was doing, um, I think it was fine. You know, it was, it was fun. I could have probably polished it off a little bit more. Um, but at the same time, it was kind of, it was done. I was done with it. And it was a fun sculpt. And, and I think I'm just ready to tur to move on to another, to another thing. So. Oh, can you see the design on screen? Um, Yes. So <laughs> there, <laughs> now you see it. So I'm I'm still playing around with costumes and proportions, and you know, there's a story that I'm I'm developing with this as well. So it's it's a little bit of uh, still in development. So I'm not I'm trying not to show 
it too much as as I'm still working on it and, and it may change a little bit drastically. Maybe I'll pull it in when I get closer to the to sculpting out details. Oh, you vote on the third design. People have really liked that third design. What happened to the other channel? What's the other channel? Um, I don't know what the third channel is. What's the other channel? So, uh, are you talking about how I, why I, what happened to the... <laughs> What happened? Um, <laughs> uh, my power went out, so I was streaming for a couple of minutes, and then the power died on it, me. So, but we're back. You know, we just charged the batteries real quick, and and we got back to it. So now. So mainly I, I stick in this phase for a while. I, I like to get um, silhouette down. You know, if it can look good in, you know, a really low poly form, then I will be happy with life and move up. But I, I like to stay in this form for quite a bit. Um, the Tuminator. Yes, how's it going? That's cool. You have a table at Lightbox, awesome. um, which is awesome. Yes. Is Lightbox like a stab at CTN? Um, yes. <laughs> you know, I, I will not comment officially on that. Um, I think it started that way. Um, and the way that I like to see it is that, one, I think it's good to have, I mean, CTN for me is really, I really like CTN. I have presented a number of times at CTN, um, and I've always had a lot of fun because I, I get to meet and mingle with some of the artists that I just love. Um, I do think the organization is wanting. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if I've ever been treated poorly there by by the organizers, but I have experienced kind of the the uh, the chaos that goes on there. So it's, I think it is a little bit of just trying to say, Hey, you know what, if we're not happy with, with CTN, why don't we do our own thing? And Bobby Chu's like, yeah, I could do that. And he did. <laughs> and it's turned out to be this awesome, cool thing. Um, I am doing great. So, yeah, I like to, to think of it as, I mean, hopefully it's not pure, purely based on just spite though maybe it has started that way, but maybe that, that um, there's a need for more conventions like, like CTN, where artists can get together and they can meet the students that are, that are up and coming and, and people can be inspired in, in the way that that CTN has done for people. I mean, I, I've, I honestly, I still go to CTN. I've got my tickets for CTN already. I mean, just my tickets. I'm not tabling there. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to go still. To just, it's, you know, they always have a really good class of, presenters and and presentations and i and i really like kind of that's one of my buckets that i use to refill my tank is is that conference but i'm really excited for lightbox just because i i wanted to support more conferences like this you know it'd be nice to to see these kind of conferences happen a little bit outside of california too one day like, um, I would love for something like this to, to be successful in, you know, Utah, where I live. Hey, how's it going? I can't seem to find you on Twitch. Mm, 
my Twitch. I haven't twitched <laughs> in a long time. Um, I think my screen name is the Red Beard Art. I think that's it. Yep, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> hey, Indy. Yeah, that's that's it. Are you going to the ZBrush Summit this year? Um, I am not going to the Z... Well, right now, who knows? I may, like... <laughs> I may just say, screw it, and just find a way to go. Right now, it's a little... It's a little overlapping with... With a few things. Um, we're, you know, we're pretty heavy in production mode right now in the game that I'm working on at work, and... It's my wife's birthday, and I mean, there's a few things not going in my favor to to go as much as I want to because the ZBrush Summit is also one of those things that I love. Like I stream, I stream the whole thing every year. I watch the whole thing every year. Uh, it's it's always a blast. Any tips on proportions? It's one thing I struggle the most with. I try to use the general rule of eight heads tall. What about me? Um, so that's a great question, actually. So what I recommend for getting your proportions is sticking in this low, this low fidelity phase for a really long time. Like get pretty much your whole proportions and things set before you start going up in, in subdivisions. That's the, probably the biggest problem that new sculptors have when they, when they start into ZBrush is that they want to like, ZBrush is so powerful and, and it's really easy to start going up in subdivisions and it's fun to go up in subdivisions. Like, oh my gosh, is it just fun to, to subdivide something up and start like throwing down a bunch of detail. But if you're looking on, if you're struggling with proportions, then I think the best way to to get to fix that or to help with that is to is to stick in this low poly phase where you're looking not at the detail but at the size and relationship to things. So right now, my whole focus is one proportion. But my proportions are different because I'm not I'm not working off of a realistic character. I'm working off of a designed character. So this is the concept that I'm working off of right now. And this guy, you know, this kid, one, he's a kid, and he's not eight heads tall. He's like, let's see, um, one, two, three, four heads tall, probably. And But this is the proportions that I'm working with now. And I'm trying to use relationships. I'm trying to... Like, this is going to be one scale. My head scale is one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to try to use that along with my anatomy study. So I'm going to have anatomy references up with me. I'm going to be looking at, um, I'm going to be looking at references and, because as much as I've studied anatomy, I'm still not a pro. I think there's very few people that, that are. I mean, there's not very few people are, but... Uh, I, I like having references and, and and looking at, you know, just to keep things in mind. And then I'm breaking things down to a very um, simple and understandable shape and size relationship at this point. So that's probably the best thing I can say for helping helping get anatomy or not anatomy but proportions is just take it slow take your time build up slowly and then um, always what I you know what another thing that new artists struggle with is asking for feedback you know I think 
I think that's a hard thing for artists in general to learn is to just ask for feedback, but it's a, an extremely helpful, it's an extremely helpful thing to do is to be able to, to one, don't just ask feedback from someone who you don't know. You know, feedback is a very kind of a sacred thing because you want to one, ask someone that you can trust that, you know, that, um, they're, they have an understanding of what you're struggling with. Um, and two, that, that will give honest, helpful, and, you know, understanding feedback because one getting like feedback that it doesn't look right isn't going to be helpful and nor is like getting over feedback when when you need to get to certain levels before you start to progress and you need to understand things at a certain level so asking for feedback from a trusted art source is is really key is really a good thing Oh man, I got all scaled out of whack. Okay. Ho, 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 ho. There we go. I mean, if anyone's ever really watched one of my streams, I'm not, I'm not trying to push the detail as quick as possible. I mean, there are very talented artists that can do that. I'm, I really like to kind of problem solve up front, and then when I get into different aspects, um, that's when I'm more loose. But I want to solve the big questions kind of up front. So now this is a way that I'm checking my proportion. So I've got the head unmasked, and then I'm just going to hold control and drag, kind of see where the general proportions are. And it's, it's feeling okay, because I know the head is actually going to be a little bit bigger, but this is just kind of a block-in phase, so you can just scale that up just a titch, and now it's probably closer to that forehead. Yeah. So that's probably more in line with what I'm looking for. Is there more the length of things that I struggle with the most? Like I'll do a sculpt of legs, which will be too short. My torso will be tiny. It'll have super long arms, but I'm slowly getting the hang of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just so this will help. And then if you are doing things like this, where you're blocking things in really low. I'm going to change my colors so you can really see this. Um, if you are doing things in, in a low poly state like this, it's really easy to check proportions and just understanding anatomy and relationships. So if, I, if I'm measuring things based off of anatomy, so this is, I'll do this for example. I want my arm... Okay, so if this was his full arm, let's just pretend it is, then it's gonna, his hand will reach just about, like if you were to stand up straight and put your hands down by your side, you're probably about a hand, like a, a palm above your knee, like a, a palm length. So that's, that's the proportions that you're looking for. So by doing it this way, I can check to see where those arms are gonna lie. And by doing this, if I have a hand here, you know, it's just going to rest just about above his knee. So that's, I'm guessing that that's probably actually the right size for his hand, for his arms, the right length. 
and then to check the legs because the legs are a little bit different. The legs, the proportions to the legs um, are quite a bit different actually. So if we have the leg here, the thigh, the thigh is probably um, about, if we we're breaking it up into fourths, it's just a little bit longer than the knee. So if the knee, if you take out, if the cut was here for the knee, this size, whoops, this size should be the same. Oh, let's do that again. This size should be the same as this size. Oh. And it is. Like, if you take out the knee, those two relationships should be the same. But because you have the knee in there, the thigh area is just a little bit longer. So you've got that. Let's see what else I've got. Um... So, yeah, so just understanding, um, practicing and understanding anatomy is good. Is not, not just good, but is, like, essential. Something that I still do every day is I, I study anatomy in one form or another, and that's either through life drawings where I go out and, and I'm, um, I don't want that neck in there. Just changing these arms just a little bit. What was I saying? Oh, the anatomy stuff. So yeah, so I, I do life drawings, and if I don't do life drawings, then I'll actually just sit down at my computer, and I will use a website um, called quickposes.com where you can actually go, and they have a bunch of anatomy references where you can go and... and just do gesture drawings and by doing gesture drawings the things that I'm I'm learning is that I don't know anatomy at all but it's also just understanding life and how how the body moves and body language and things like that so So if there's anything you get from this, it's that you work in low poly for a very long time and study anatomy for years. I think I used to have like a race to like, you have to study and know all anatomy of everything right away. And now I'm, I'm comfortable with, you know, I still study quite a bit. But it's not like this fervent race that I have to know every little detail. I'm, I'm good um, understanding. I'm good feeling with the progression that I'm understanding things at. Not to say that I can't learn more because I think there's always time to learn more. But I'm still learning and I'm, you know, as long as I'm doing a little bit here and there, then I feel good.
Hello, look at Angel. Also, if you don't know me, I do a tutorial. I do many different tutorial series on gumroad.com slash redbeard that you can check out from intro to advanced. And I've got some more coming up in the next week or so. I'm very bad at self-promotion. Um, <laughs> something that I'm trying to work on. But it's something that I just have never been good at. But if you want to know a little bit more about my tutorials, <laughs> is um, is I I am very thorough. There's very little time lapse sculpting that I do. I, I like to explain every thought that goes into you know my brushwork, um, to the design language, to the theory behind what I'm doing. So you're not just learning how, but you're learning like why something is done a specific way. It's a lot more in depth than I'm doing now. This is just kind of rough concept sculpting. Um, you should get some clay out. I should get some clay out. Yeah, so exaggerating proportions, that is, a, a, it can be a very confusing thing. Um, what, and that goes back to anatomy training, like the reason why I think every artist, whether you're a realistic artist or, you know, whether you're specialized in realism or you specialize in stylization or design characters is by understanding anatomy you and your study of anatomy then you can learn when to break the rules and how what rules you can push and what rules you can you can break and still find that um, overall appeal and like what is true appeal so Yes, so I highly recommend that everyone everywhere study anatomy. I don't know where my tunes went. Can you guys even hear the music? Um, as it's a new tutorial that you are working on with hard service and 3d printing for a character as well or a purely an inorganic object so that's a great question it is a it is a brand new tutorial with a new character that i made and it is hard surface oriented and 3d printing oriented so i i go through the whole process from concept to uh modeling techniques for 3d printing specifically and and you know just step by step the key things that you should know and then i you know finish it off with prepping the print printing it and showing the final results and it's pretty i'm pretty happy with how it turned out um i just had a buddy of mine who works at a 3d printing company he printed my design on a big like two hundred thousand dollar printer and my goodness it is beautiful <laughs> i loves it so much so <laughs> but that i will reveal in time <laughs>
So follow me on my social medias if you're not already, because I'll be announcing a bunch of stuff um, very soon. A large part of anatomy is just understanding the rhythm and flows of the human, of the human, of like what, what are the, what are the twists, what are the turns, what are the parts that, you know, what are the angles, what are, what's this? You know, some of this stuff is very hard to see at this stage, so I'm just working on building up little, little bits here and there, trying not to rush too much. I'm um, just curious about the pipeline of your day, um, your day to day at work. How fast are you? How fast are your deadlines to finish a character? Do you spend all your day on ZBrush sculpting, or is there a lot of um, group meetings? Um, well, there's not too much that I can talk about that actually, but you know, because I am, I am now technically the character lead at on the project that I'm working on that my day is probably split between half feedback, half direction, you know, half feedback and direction and then half production. So depending on, depending on, um, what I can do, I can, I'm always trying to squeeze out some time in ZBrush, but I'll, I'll spend when I do have a project that I'm working on, I'll spend, 90% of the time in ZBrush because I'm comfortable with the workflow and I'm not jumping into Maya until the absolute <laughs> necessary time. Um, so... But yeah, I... I Love my ZBrushing. What about for a person who isn't an art lead, more like junior artist or artist? So yeah, so that 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 production is probably going to be, if they were just working, I'm assuming that it would most likely be the majority in ZBrush. I mean, once there's different, you know, I've been at different studios, like at Disney, for example, we were the whole production from start to finish for each character. Uh, and the, the turnaround for those characters, I'm thinking was close to about two months from start to finish. Like when we were handed off the concept to, to final in-game, game res, textured um, characters. With, on top of that, we're doing the the maquettes, you know, the stuff. So and maybe, maybe it wasn't two months. Maybe it was more like three months, actually. But maybe it was two months. I don't know. Maybe I've blocked it all out. So, but that's, you know, that's working nonstop. Like we did very little meetings. Um, we got feedback quite, quite consistently, you know, every day. Uh, and it, we worked, you know, pretty much nonstop on just getting those characters out the doors as soon as we could, because 
because we were the character team, we were pretty front loaded and we needed to finish the characters with enough time to manufacture them and have the characters, you know, re produced and then released. So there was a, quite a bit of, you know, hurry to some of the stuff that we were doing. Um, yes and no. The that's most likely recycled a lot of stuff. Yeah, some of the bodies we recycled. Uh, the faces, at least speaking for myself, I never recycled any of the faces. Like I never started from a different face. I always started from a sphere, just because I felt like I was I could keep myself from looking having the characters look too similar. Um, and even times I would just sculpt the full body again because I was a young spry lad and I was like, oh, I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to, it's going to be good practice. And it was, honestly, it was, the, it was great practice. And if I could start every character from this, you know, from nothing, I would, because I think it's, it's, um, highly beneficial to just sculpt stuff. leaning a little too far forward so I'm just going to push him <laughs> yeah it it was crazy and i didn't do that all the time like i i think many times oh no i should probably save this before it all crashes don't look at my secret projects i guess Um, Rodrigo Trujillo Monte Montoya asks, hello, may I ask what character, what kind of character am I making? So I am making, it's this character that is just an early concept that I started drawing around with. Uh, and I'm just kind of developing early ideas. Like I have a story in mind for him. So he kind of fits inside, inside this story, but I'm still kind of developing who he is, what he is. Um, so I know, I know the personality that I want with him, which is right here. The concert, the, the costume will come after I get his personality nailed down. So that's what I'm, I'm working on right now. Hi Matt, do you block so low for something for something special? Um, yeah, I, I I block this low just for silhouette purposes. That I'm just looking at simple proportions, and if I can get a really low poly to look good, to have the gesture, to have the anatomy that I want. Like I already, I feel like this is starting to come to life. Like I I can feel 
the life in this, then I I have more control than just pulling a lot of high poly spheres around. So the reason I stay so low for a while is just kind of I'm answering the questions that are harder to solve when you're working with such a high poly form. He kind of gives a weird science nerd vibe. Good, good. These are all good things. This is confirmations for me. So a lot of like what I what I like to do is just kind of test. Like at this point, I mean, if you if you checked my Instagram, um, you'll kind of see that I've I'm getting people's opinions on certain things and seeing how people feel about one thing or another. So I like to I just like to to see if what I think is creating this character is coming across and I think that's I wanted that vibe the kind of the nerdy sciencey vibe um So yeah good I like hearing I like hearing that <laughs> Another question Hello, Matt. For posing, do you rig characters or use ZBrush? So for personal, for myself, um, I like to just pose everything in ZBrush because I'm I'm really comfortable. I mean, after doing so many characters in in Disney with Disney Infinity, that we just all posed in ZBrush, you get really comfortable at it with the transpose tool and and so yeah, I just I just pose in ZBrush because it's easy for me. Let's squish these hands down just a little bit cuz they're not that big. This is just the palm by the way. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the Instagram? Um, my Instagram, I'm going to type it in Twitch. But it, you'll see the link come up here. Here we go. There it is. It's It should be coming up soon. So even the hands, like, I don't need to block in more than this. Oops. Oops. So honestly, sculpting in ZBrush for me is like, one of the most cathartic and I really actually like this phase of just low low poly stuff because there's no pressure to it you know you could make this look as crappy as you want <laughs> and it's gonna be gonna be okay <laughs> I guess No, I, I've actually found that, you know, modeling 
in this fashion, even though it's pretty, it's a slow start, I feel like it's a quicker finish because there's not nearly as much heavy sculpting. This is all just more um, theoretical sculpting. <laughs> no, it's just, this is just more kind of pushing polys around. I don't like that. And really the only reason I'm like spending time on some of this stuff, like I don't, there's no need to really flesh out this hand more than it is. I'm just, again, just wanting to feel this character. And if the character has kind of an animated look to his hands, um, it's nice. Oh, I'm going to share a, a little snippet of my tutorial with you. And this is all you're going to get because I've been geeking out over this ever since I got it. Hold on. So this is the what what you could learn on my tutorial that has yet to be released. But look at this pretty little hand. And it works and it fits so well. Oh yes. It's so pretty. Hello, Mr. Hand. <laughs> but anyways, I just like that because it's so pretty. Anyways, that's all you get until I actually post the you know, release it. <laughs> Gretchen. Oh, Gretchen from Recess. Yeah, I kind of get that vibe. Yeah, I could, I could accept that. By the way, I really like your tutorial, your work. I have one of your tutorials, which is super helpful. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you so much for your support. What did I do with my pen? There we go. Ah, oh, yes. Thank you very much, Maker. I'll have to check out your stuff. So, looking at this, there's really like... I think it's starting to feel good. The things that I like to look at... Um, I'm going to just delete. Not delete, but hide these arms is one the S curve, which is kind of this natural curve that you find in anatomy. Um, and to have it in a couple of spots, like the back has got the little arch and then it will follow through. They're very subtle curves, but it's got it. Um, that the, I'm working with straights. Hugo, what's up? I'm working with straights and curves, so if you see the legs, the shape of the legs is straight, and then the curve is on the outside. So this is an exaggerated leg, but it still hits that form. And then the same with the arms, where it's mostly flat, and then I have my curve on top, if you can see that. So there's these are the things I'm considering. And even, you know, when I, again, without the arms, like, kind of the rib cage is here. He's got his pelvic bone, which is here. And then, you know, the, the key anatomy stuff. So there's a couple of things I, I guess I still need to do, which is just like the kneecap. And 
the reason why I'm blocking in some of these details is mainly because it helps solidify some of the silhouette. And then maybe the elbow is probably okay with how it's with how it is, but I could just do a simple something. Yeah, so this is really probably one of my, like, probably my favorite phase of sculpting is just figuring out, giving a character personality at this phase. <laughs> if I can give a character personality at this phase, that is a success. You know, checking it in silhouette mode. Seeing if there's anything that's starting to lack on this. You know, I'm trying to subtly define simple muscles in muscle groups without going too detailed. Um, can I just say that I'm really digging whatever is playing right now? <laughs> Any tips on networking and building a presence online? I mainly post to Instagram. I'm cl when I'm close to hitting 1,000 followers, but it feels like my work isn't hitting as many people as I'd like the ratio. Um, my tip for that is don't worry about it. <laughs> um, at this point, just focus on, on creating art that you like. Uh... I've I've been on Instagram a really long time, um, pretty much since it, it was launched, and I don't have nearly as big a following as, as some of these amazing artists, or, you know, m most, I think I have a, a, you know, a pretty small following when it comes to some of these amazing, amazing artists, and it, it doesn't matter... <laughs> It's it's having a big following's not going to help you get a job necessarily. At least from from what I've experienced in life, um, just not meaning that that it's not nice to have a following and stuff. Like I appreciate people following, but it to to try to grow just to try to get a larger following for a larger following sake, I think is, is not, not necessary, not necessary. And it sometimes will hurt art because you're trying to, to manipulate the system like, Oh, well, what will get, well, what will get the most likes? Um, and I don't think that's, that's, I mean, that can be successful. There are some artists that do do that. They, you know, they know what, will get the most likes and they'll, they'll do that over and over and over. Um, but mainly I, I just don't think it's, it's something that needs to be worried about initially. Um, as far as like networking goes, I think, 
I think being able to go to some conventions... Uh, meeting your artists is, is always good. Asking for feedback is good. Going out, you know, out of your comfort zone is always, is always a positive thing. Um, you know, just trying to, to be active in some, some circles, like, you know, be act, be active in things, but nothing's going to speak louder for, for you than just having hard work <laughs> and practice. Um, your boss, art director, or art lead needs to enjoy your work, not regular people. Yeah, that's that's a true thing. And sometimes they don't even like it. <laughs> um, but, I mean, if if you're enjoying your art, you know, people will be drawn to that, I think. So it's more for the networking I'm looking for. I've met people through art, but I would like to have more people. Yeah, and I think that just comes with time. Like there was, there was, I mean, there still is time. I still feel like I'm in this constantly that I, <laughs> I am very timid to talk to fellow artists that I admire. Um, even artists that like I, I've interacted with <laughs> online or you know that i have a relationship that maybe we've chatted a few times online but like even at conventions i'll go up and i'll be like hi i'm a huge fan of your art they're like what's your name i'm matt oh and then i don't even say that i'm a professional i'm not i don't even say that i'm an artist i just like i just love your art because i'm i'm still i still struggle with those kind of self-confidence issues Let's see here. But I think that's good because I, I like, <laughs> I like to like artists. I guess. <laughs> and, and the last thing I want to do is feel like I'm. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the last thing I want to feel is. But I I'm okay with being the nerd. I guess. I like being the nerd. Who will talk to you about UFOs and paranormal for 2 hours before I talk to you about my art. <laughs> Hello, Matt. I love your your work. Uh, I would like to know, in your opinion, how important is the storytelling in order to create appealing characters? I think it's very important. Uh, I think it's one of the most important things, especially with appealing characters. So appeal is a very... I think it's a misunderstood term that people use. Um, I think true appeal is not necessarily making a pretty character it's it's having a character that people can relate to i think that is the key to an appealing character that if you can make something that makes someone connect to that idea that you're that you're trying to to get across with that character then that's a successful character design um it's not necessarily making something that's really pretty or or that it's 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 having a relationship with that idea and so coming up with a character that's more thought out than oh i'm gonna make a guy with some big rocket on his shoulder and he's gonna have a machete in his mouth and and uh you know he's gonna have blood all over his face or I'm going to make a chick and she's going to have these big tracks of land and and 
I think that though you can do that very well and there's artists that do that very well, but there's certainly a lack of, of connection to those. There's a lack of, of true appeal to those, I think. So, you know, understanding, taking time to like, okay, one, what is, I think the ground level is like understanding personality. Like what's this, what is this personality? Is he confident? Is he shy? He, she is, is what are their insecurities or outgoing? (laughs) Nice save. Um, So doing these things though, it may never be seen by another person can, will come across if done successfully in your character design. So yes, there's a great, um, there's a great book and I would bring it out because I normally have it, um, by me at all times by Tom Bancroft called, um, story driven character character design it's like one of three books ever made on character design but it is it is gold it's not a very big book it's not expensive but his two books on character design of the three that are out there are pure gold so that's tom bancroft he's original he's one of the, like the disney animators he, he designed mushu and animated mushu um, worked on pocahontas i hate he's you know, he's got a podcast now. He's doing amazing, awesome things. He's, uh, he's one of my favorite people, um, who I've interacted with. He's one, (laughs) he's one of those artists that I've interacted with several times online, like well, where he's commented on my, my stuff and we've chatted on, you know, direct messenger or whatever it's called. Um, and then in real life, I don't say any of that. I'm just like, I just love your work. And I'm grateful for you. So we've I've done that several times to him specifically. <laughs> and, but our, our online relationship is really solid. Like we respect each other, I think. <laughs> so I think at this point I'm happy with, the block in, you know, I'm going to just bring this up and then I'm going to test it. Let's throw some perspective on there and then just bring in my concept and see how it feels next to it. His legs might be feeling a little too skinny. Um, I think proportionally, I think his body's going to feel fine. It's like torso feels good. I might. Mm. I think this is going to be okay, actually. It might be a little thick right here. I'm going to bring those down and maybe bring his shoulders out just a little bit. But. I'm not worried about the head. The head is just size relationship right now. Is that the Disney dude with the long hair? What is the Disney dude with the long hair? Who's the Disney dude with the long hair? What's that question again? Oh, Tom Brancroft. No, he's not the Disney. No, that's, that's, um, Leo. Leo. Urich, oh, oh, Urich, Urok. Uh, no, that's not. <laughs> um, no, Tom Bancroft. He is an animator. Um, he's got a twin brother, Tom and Tim Bancroft. Who are the Bancrofts? Right now, I'm, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. It's Tom Bancroft and Tony. That's what it is. Oh, this took a drastic change. 
punk rock opera. Okay. Tony Bancroft. Yes, thank you. Yeah, just two amazing artists. Uh, a long time ago, I took his... Um, he did a, a online workshop, which was like... It was gold. It was so good. I still refer to it. For myself, like I, I, I still like pull some of the notes that he gave me, um, because it was just, it was really exactly what I needed. So at this point, where I'm happy, I'm gonna save this off, and then save a new version because I want, if I ever want to come back to this, I will. Aaron Blaze. Ah, uh, the Aaron Blaze. Yeah, he also has long hair. Yes, I love Aaron Blaze's stuff too. He's he's fantastic. He's a little bit more animation um, driven. Not that his characters aren't amazing because his characters are amazing. Um, but I, Tom Tom's books have been just... They've been so helpful. Anyways... So now that I'm at this point, oh, sorry, I've got an itchy nose. I'm going to separate this out into a few different parts. So the parts that I want to keep together are, you know, let's do, I want the arms and the shoulders, and but the hands to be separate still. So we'll just do these as one. I'm going to split these arms I'm gonna switch this to my rectangle select and the shoulders I actually let's take it back I want my arms to be one keep my shoulders separate for now and I'm gonna do my torso and Okay, okay. I'm just going to start splitting things. Grow, grow, grow. Split hidden. Split hidden. And I'm going to take the neck in this one, actually. Split hidden. And so this is the next phase of, of what I normally do. Split hidden. Split hidden. Split hidden. So now I have kind of the core shapes of this. Oh, more questions. Hello, Hannibal. I need to head off now, man. I appreciate the advice you gave you've given me. I'll be on the lookout for the post later on Gretchen's older brother. <laughs> if he's not in a lab coat, it'll cause a riot. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, good night and enjoy the rest of the stream. Hey, yeah, thanks for coming by and thanks for your questions. Hope that any of my ramblings helped. Hannibal, first time viewer, yes. Welcome to the conspiracy of uh, ZBrush, which was supposed to be called YBrush, but because the Men in Black owned that name, um, it had to be... Uh, ZBrush. <laughs> I, you do muscular superhero types. Um, when I when I po legs and especially arms. I don't know what the po legs is. The deformation is horrendous. Oh yeah. So the the key to like position. Oh, when you position legs, is just is go real slow and have subdivisions. So, I mean, there's, when you're, 
horking a knee, like when you're bending a knee, there's going to be so much because your knee looks so different from straight to bend your leg, the way that the knee and the, the muscles all work together. Um, they just are deformed so much. So there's going to be a ton of sculpting. So I think that's just, I mean, there wasn't a character that we did for Disney infinity that we bent their knee and that we didn't do some heavy re sculpting for the whole thing. Um, do I split parts to control the, def the deformation at this point? I'm actually just splitting the parts to control my sculpt. Cause I'm going to be combining these together and, and, and sculpting on them a little bit. And so I'm actually just sculpting them because it's, it's just easier to control. And once I get to a point, I'm going to be like, Hey, I love us. This is great. Um, and we'll, merge everything together and then and then sculpt everything kind of sculpt out the transitions but at this point i'm just bringing up my concept again um, i'm just going to start kind of sculpting things out but maybe subdivide it up once and dynameshing and just see kind of what that looks like I'm actually going to take off the neck for now. So this is just Dynamesh at a super low resolution, but I'm just kind of blocking out kind of the anatomy of this. You know, doing some tap smoothing. Like understanding like anatomy of this is the shape of the rib cage and just trying to kind of sculpt around that idea. Kind of understanding how the muscles form. You know, this is a skinny young kid. So his proportions are, are going to be lean. You know, I'm not bringing in too much realistic anatomy, but anyways. Um, so, so going low poly on a beefcake will give you the hard bends. I think it'll be more controllable. It'll be more controllable. Um... You're posing the guy. Oh, this is this is going to be a pretty because you have to understand what's deforming. So if you have, if you have a pretty under, good understanding of anatomy, the muscles that you know it's not just here to here that's going to be changing. You're you're changing the the scapula. You're changing you know all of this stuff will go with it. You know the muscles that all come with this movement. So understanding how, where you're going to be making those bends, you're going to be doing some heavy re-sculpting, but just be okay with that because that's, you know, it'll make it look real if you, you know, raging. A 
So the two brushes that you're going to be seeing me use besides the move brush is this jet cut brush. This is a brush that is made by a Disney artist that I used to work with, Ian Jacobs. Um, it's, it's a, it's become one of my workhorse brushes just because it's really good at like just cutting in little, little details. And then I mix that with just the move brush and, you know, the clay sculpt, the clay buildup brush, where I'm just kind of roughing out anatomy. And then I'm thinking, okay, so what, what kind of shapes can I do that will sell the idea that there's actual bones and muscle underneath the skin with one or two shapes instead of trying to go too crazy. Um, Ricardo, Samet, I've been trying to achieve something similar close to the Infinity style, but struggling a bit. Do you do any mentorship, or could I send you some stuff and get feedback? That would mean a lot. Um, yes, Ricardo. So I don't offer any mentorships um, simply because I, I just didn't. I just haven't had enough time, and if I want to do it, I want to do it right. It may be something that I offer in the future. Um, currently, I am I am not. But that being said, I do. If if you take the time to reach out to me and send me either an email or a direct message on Facebook, um, and if you're <laughs> and if you're patient, then I I'm always happy to give feedback when I can. Um, sometimes it takes me a couple of days to to find the time to sit down because I like to do sketch overs and and you know provide some decent feedback. So Phil, yes, please feel free to to reach out and and send me something because I think it's you know having feedback is is super beneficial so when I can give it I do Um, so yeah, so send me some stuff. So, it, you know, you'll see me now just, I'm just kind of going over different, I'll just be going over different parts of the anatomy. Some of this is getting really thin, so I'm just going to turn on this back face masking. And just making sure I'm not, um, sculpting through the other side. And the legs I might spend a little bit more time with um, because from what I can tell my concepts, they're probably going to be seen. <laughs> like I'm not just going to cover up the legs with pants. So I'm probably going to spend some, some real love time with these legs. Oh yeah, I do remember that one, Hugo. Did you get did you ever end up finishing that? I actually miss doing those. I used to do I used to stream personally more regularly, which I'll probably start doing again um after my tutorials 
out and uh, and I'm kind of back on like the non-production side. You know, I like to to take breaks in between making tutorials just because it keeps it fun for me. But what I what I used to do is I would stream every, you know, one day a week and then that the first the first, you know, Thursday or whatever of every week, I would do a critique night where I would just let whoever wanted to just send me images or the actual ZTL of what, you know, the actual ZBrush file of what they were working on. And then I would just do draw overs and sketch overs and talk through some feedback. And it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun, actually. I think people really liked doing it. Hello from Indonesia. Nice. Andrew, thank you for joining us. We're making some knees. Get that muscle more accurate not yet you're developing another uh, cool oh yeah I, I love Sam's stuff Sam's stuff is awesome I actually was was looking at his stuff just the other day because I was looking I wanted to do another character and I was like what what should I do and I was looking at his stuff because it's just lively and just he's got cool stuff cool proportions to a lot of his stuff um hey thank you i th my sketches are <laughs> okay i consider myself a struggling 2d artist i'm a 3d artist that really loves 2d and isn't very good <laughs> but i i like to do it so i keep doing it um matt have i ever tried any of the dis the budget display tablets um, like the Cinti competition, I have, I have. Okay, but this was this was years ago. Um, I tried. What was it called? It started with a Y. Um, it was the Mono Price tablet, and I don't know if Mono Price tablets are around. Let's see. Let's see. Um, so their their non-screen tablet, I've tried that, and it's actually it's very close to the to the to the Cintiq. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can find. But I think that was the last one. I can't remember what the name of it was. But I did try it. It was a monoprice tablet. Um, and I only tried it for a little while. But it was actually really, really good. I think it was, it was four or five hundred dollars at the time. And... I was like, oh, okay, this is legit. I want, I want one of these. Um, and I think just before I pulled the trigger, I think the only reason I didn't pull the trigger is because the resolution was at that time, it was pretty poor. It wasn't even 1080. I think it was 720p. And it was a 21 inch monitor and at, th at that size you could just see the pixels and that's that was what like accuracy and drawing wise it was perfect it was fine but as far as like screen resolution and screen fill because it was it was basically like you were just drawing on pure glass which wasn't great because the nibs kind of they just didn't it didn't it didn't feel as good as like the Cintiq does, obviously. I mean, the Cintiq is the 
the Cadillac of tablets, right? Um, so it didn't feel as good as that. And it kind of felt like drawing on a... It kind of felt like drawing on a uh, an iPad Pro, if anyone's ever done that. And one thing, because and I, I got used to it, but then I got the the screen protector that feels like you're drawing on paper. And I love that. It's That's probably one of my favorite drawing experiences on a tablet that there are. I, I think I prefer drawing on my, on my iPad Pro more than I like drawing on my Cintiq, my big 27-inch Cintiq. Sculpting-wise, I mean, there's nothing... If I could sculpt on the go, I would do that in a heartbeat. I've actually been looking into the the Wacom's Mobile Studio Pro and just I'm debating one I I it's been a while since they updated it so like my hope is maybe they're going to update it soon should I just wait until the update but I've caught I've been burned by that before where like you know before I bought this computer I was just a I was a Mac man <laughs> All my computers were Macs, and I was waiting for like Mac to update the the uh, Mac Pro. I was just waiting, and it was like three or four years of waiting, and nothing happened, nothing. <laughs> and so finally, I left. I said, "See you, suckers!" to the Apple computer, and built my own personal PC. And it's I've never looked back. It's awesome. But back to the, I think um, the new, t I, I think that I've heard good reviews of some of the, the cheaper tablets out there. Um, okay, why does your Twitch channel not seem to exist anymore? It may not exist because I don't know. Um, let me see. <laughs> let me see. <laughs> I don't know. This is my current name. I used to have, um, I used to have a different username, and and it's uh, that one's not around anymore. It was like Matt or Redbeard three D. That one's gone. It's the Redbeard art, which is around now. But I don't know if that's still around. I haven't used it for months, so. The Mobile Studio Pro is powerful enough, but you have to get the right version. So the Mobile Studio 16-inch, or not the 16-inch, sorry, not the 16-inch, but the one with 16 gigs has an updated, you know, has the right CPU and enough RAM to be able to, like, to to handle it. I'm going to bring those up just a little bit. Those seem like they've moved down. The ZBook 2 is actually actually has a Wacom. It does have the Wacom tech in it. Cuz back in the day the the Surface Pro had Wacom tech in it and I I tried those and they were awesome. And then the second version came out and they ditched the Wacom tech. Um and the second version sucked. 
<laughs> it did. And then the third version came out, and I got a third version because I actually liked how it felt so much. And that was, it held me good. It I could never, it still wasn't quite powerful enough to do ZBrush. It could kind of do ZBrush, but it wasn't really that powerful, nor was it um, super pen responsive. It, it's still like you were fighting a little bit against the tech on it. The ankles got a little bit too skinny. So, I mean, I've tried so many different things. Um, let's see, I'm missing some things here. I've tried Forge app. I'm not, <laughs> not sold on it. Um, I think it would be awesome if, if Pixelogic made a ZBrush Pro version of ZBrush. <laughs> Pixelogic did that. I've been dropping love notes to Joseph Drust all the time about how much I want that. And if they need any testers, then I'm around. Um, but I don't know if that's, I haven't heard anything to that development. Nor would they be happy if I had heard something and then I've told you about it. <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh, this is that death metal stuff. This is good. Let's see if we can get something else. Punk Ropra. How long does it take to explore exaggerate proportions in the character design? So I'm doing this from a, a rough concept that I'm making, that, I'm, that I've made. And normally I like to, to play around with this phase you know, for a while until it feels good. So the concept that I'm doing is right here. Um, and I've kind of trying to figure out, I played around a lot with this before. This is like many sketches down the road that I'm, that I'm doing this. So I played around with shapes and proportions and size relation. Ooh, excuse me, some size relationships until I got to this point and also like had a certain feeling and personality that I wanted this to have. Now these legs are feeling really long now I'm looking at this, but I might just do one of these. scale those down just a little bit actually I think we got a little bit maybe too much mass on the the ankles Hello from Korea. Nice. Thanks for joining us. That's awesome. Um, but because of the price of the mobile studio, it's still quite expensive. Today you can get a very powerful notebook with more affordable than a Cintiq or a tablet. Um, the same. Yeah, that I, I completely agree. Um, I think the, the real benefit to is just whack -um tech because it's it really is unbeatable, especially when it comes to sculpting. I don't know if I've experienced another tablet that can handle the sensitivity that that comes across um, in in sculpting. 
like the the Cintiq does or the Wacom Tech does. But if you're just looking for a good travel notebook, like a, I mean that's basically what I use my my um, Surface Pro Three as was my use my digital notebook, my digital sketchbook, until I tried the uh, the um, iPad Pro because I, again, there's nothing that I've experienced that is such a good drawing like a natural drawing experience. The following audio was from a live music session recorded at the studios of Kroger Community yes. Radio in Portland, Oregon. More information about Kroger can be found online at Kroger. Uh, let's see here. Da -da -da. Greetings from China. Yes. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Um, I have tried the Forger app, Hugo, and I haven't. I haven't wanted to spend more than five minutes <laughs> um, because of the price. Oh yeah, I've already read that one. Yeah. Uh, just making sure I'm caught up on all these. How do you like the Surface Pro 5? I've I've actually, you know, thought about just going back to the Surface Pro for um, a tablet computer. But again, I like the Cintiq, the mobile studio, because of the buttons that are on the side, which are nice. And then using, um, is it Tablet Pro? which is, is a guy that has developed just some floating hotkeys. It's not bad with a new pen. But I have an Xbox, an Xbox pad as buttons. Ooh, I haven't, I haven't tried that or heard of people trying that actually. And that's nice. Do you do, I mean, have you done anything in ZBrush with it, Maker? Um, yeah, I have. That seems less, that the the uh Cintiqs with the expanded like computer like you could put a computer into it seems like a strange move because you can't update those computers at all so you're just you're again buying in a really expensive tablet and a computer that can't be updated so that's a hard sell for me too. I mean, that's also coming just because I've now been through the process of building my own computer and I and upgrading it and, and knowing how beneficial it is to to invest in that kind of in that kind of process. And, you know, I've had the uh what was it, the Cinti Companion which was really cool, but I had the hybrid, so it wasn't a full computer. It was a tablet computer. And they still had a bunch of kinks to work out with that. So it was bulky. It was heavy. It was like, I think it was like close to six pounds or seven pounds. And for a tablet, that's heavy. That is, it is bulky. And it was long too. It was really wide. I think another he a hesitancy to this to the uh, mobile studio pro is that 16 to 9 ratio screen ratio i don't know why they're doing that it's this really wide thin screen makes it really wide um i like the cintiq screen it doesn't feel wide it's not a 16 one i think it's a i don't know what it is but it's it's not that So 
so that's those are my thoughts on tablets. Wacom has launched the new engine. Yeah, I saw that. Um, this is like a class section session. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my Surface Pro 3 died a couple of months ago. Oh, no. <laughs> I I love I really did love my Service Pro 3. The only problem that I had, and I don't know if you had this, was just that it didn't happen very often, but when it did, I was so frustrated that the pen would not connect. It wouldn't it wouldn't connect to the Bluetooth or something. Or it would show that it would was connected and not actually be connected. Um which was so frustrating to me. Oops. Um, Douglas Harris, what advice do I have for a 20 year old getting into college, um, getting to 3D for the first time? So one Douglas, I think the advice I have is just to, to do it every day. Spend multiple hours every single day in ZBrush and doing art. Uh, know that nothing, like, you, it, it doesn't matter where you go, whether you don't go to a college or whether you do go to a college. Um, it doesn't matter where you go or, or where you didn't go. It matters how much effort you're putting into the extra time. So if you're putting in extra time, then you'll progress faster. You'll learn faster. So I recommend just spending hours, you know, f you know, spend multiple hours, do, you know, learn in class, learn from online, um, learn from YouTube videos, from tutorials. There's, you know, there's so many great, tutorials out there you know i i teach some tutorials whether they're great or not that's up for debate um but just taking you know comparing yourself to the top row on art station or zebra central and pushing yourself for that level of excellence even you know at a, at when you're first starting ask for feedback once you start going, find people that you can trust with, you know, artistically feedback. And, you know, just have fun with it. There's one thing that I did when I was in school. I mean, I went to a, a 3D specific school. Uh, what I did is I sculpted that what they had us do is they gave us a, a little plastic toy skull that was fairly accurate actually to a real skull and and what we did is we would start the class with a warm-up sculpt and the teacher asked us to do a warm-up sculpt every single day just 20 minutes time yourself set a 20 minute timer and just take that and i would start with something as simple as as this this is the, my starting shape for my skull was this and just slowly one by one subdivision just sculpt 20 minutes every single day for months <laughs> i did that for nine months um and i nearly did it almost every single day for nine months and it helps you recognize shapes and proportions and how, you know, how to manipulate ZBrush. And, you know, it, it, it gets you just familiar with navigating around really quickly when you're doing it so repetitively. And especially on like the same, the same thing every day, like you're sculpting one thing over and over and over. And just not trying to stylize it, not trying to, to do anything like that. But I knew, I started learning faster ways to like, okay, if I want this shape, I can, instead of taking seven steps to get there, I could get there in three steps. Or if I spent more time in the low, 
then I could spend less time at the high. So I think, you know, just practice repetition and then just continual wanting to learn and push yourself. Like don't get satisfied with the level that you're at. Just keep, keep pushing yourself. I think that's probably the most success that you could have. Um, let's see. It says, I don't know about service nowadays. The older versions of the service feels like they were weird when they came up sketching either the Bluetooth didn't work or the app didn't work. <laughs> the app didn't support it. Yes. <laughs> On an iPad pro is probably a better solution dealing with drawing. Yeah. Drawing again, hands down. And I've, I work in many, many different, um, mediums as far as like sketching goes because I've wanted to find what feels most natural and for a long time I was it was Surface Pro oh yeah you're welcome Douglas um, a long time it was the Surface Pro and Photoshop and then the iPad came out and then it's all of a sudden the Apple Pencil and Procreate were just like <laughs> The Apple Pencil is probably the best designed uh, stylus I've ever tried, including this, like this thick, fat thing. Um, just holding a pencil is so nice. Like, let's do that. If I could have my Apple Pencil work on my Cintiq, I would be so happy. Oh, that would feel so nice. But that's okay. That's my wish list. So again, I'm even at this stage, I'm still trying to be fairly loose. Like little kids don't really have ab muscles. They have kind of like abs plus their little baby chub so i'm trying to to be true to that but then they're also skinny it's this weird it's this weird combination of like skinny yet lean <laughs> yet kind of pudgy and weird areas But I'm just trying to be really loose at this time still. Not not commit too much to anything. Just general forms. That feels better. Okay. Oh yeah, the Surface Book. I think I had a buddy who bought a Surface Book a couple of years ago, and he really loved it. You know, he and I think he the the cool or the interesting thing is that he bought he bought the uh, the iPad Pro first and returned it, and then got the Surface Book. And he, I think he really liked it, unless he didn't actually like it. And <laughs> lied to me. <laughs> no, I actually think he really liked it. Little bum. Okay. That's probably okay development for this guy. Let's go to the arms. Let's do a save. I've got about um, probably 30 more minutes. So just letting everyone know where I'm at. Is that a good idea? I should take the column of that of the Wacom pen or the gun <laughs> and make it thinner. I've thought about that. I've thought about taking my Wacom pen apart and putting it in like 3D printing a new case <laughs> and seeing if it would work. 
Um, I've seen a YouTube video of someone actually sculpting with ZBrush with the Apple Pencil on the iPad using Doulette. Oh, yeah. I'll see if I can find Yeah, I, I've seen that video, actually. And, and it's awesome. It's really cool. But I still want ZBrush on the go. I want to go to a coffee shop and sit down and and be able to sculpt to my content. <laughs> I want to be able to just like go and and take a, a a rough mesh and spend an hour and sculpt would be fun to would, would I mean I imagine so much I imagine. <laughs> Like the dream is is to be able to just like because I do these like I sculpt or I draw people I see at the coffee shop, and it would be cool to like maybe go in with a. Isn't that nice? It would be cool to be able to go in and like with a base mesh, and just do quick gestural speed sculpts the following audio was from a live music session recorded at the studios of Thank you. community radio in portland oregon more information about kboo can be found online at kboo.fm um i really like what you said about the skull exercise you did in school. Would you recommend a different object to con to consistently work on the skull or um, best object? You know the the reason why we chose a skull, or I guess why they chose a skull for us, because it wasn't necessarily like we had a choice. It was uh, we were doing that was the we started with character design in the course, which I am grateful for because that's all I wanted to do. And, you know, I, I stuck to it pretty heavily. Not, you know, the class was pretty small. We were about six students in the class. And I stuck to it pretty religiously. Like, this was, this, I was going to do that warm-up sketch as much as I possibly could. So, I thought that was helpful. And it was helpful to get a base understanding of, of anatomy um, and the underlying anatomy too. I mean, I have that skull at work that I've been lending out to people, but it's extremely helpful. I, I think maybe a skull is probably the best because you're not worrying about a face. You're worrying about just matching actual proportions to the skull and you're learning, you are learning anatomy while you're doing it. So I see that, you know, there's a benefit into doing just that yeah I sent you a gun <laughs> ooh Get a Surface 5, the biggest one. <laughs> cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I've, I really love... There's something so... That's just fun about sketching people at a coffee shop. I think there's a wide variety of people at coffee shops, which is probably one of, what makes it really fun. Also, you get, like, people, you know, you're trying to be the creep of, like, oh, I'm just drawing over here. By the way, I've been looking at you intently for the last five minutes. Please stop moving. Um, no, it's always fun cause, because mostly I don't think people care. And the people that sometimes <laughs> recognize that you're drawing them, the good ones will 
hold still. <laughs> they'll find all the time, like, someone will, like, realize I'm drawing them, and then they'll just kind of, like, stay in a pose <laughs> for a while. And some people will come over and they'll ask and they'll see and they'll they'll like, oh, cool. You know, they'll ask questions about what I'm doing and I'm saying, oh, I'm just doing the creeper's duty of, you know, drawing strangers. It's always fun. Do I have any horror stories of people getting mad at me? No one's ever gotten mad at me. Um... People have gotten no. I've, I've I've actually never gotten people to be mad at me. I've had people inappropriately like, "Oh, you should you should draw me like this," or you know, like kind of like not inappropriate, but kind of just awkward, you know. Which maybe I'm like, "Oh, well, what's in your maybe like what's in your coffee type of thing." <laughs> But no, I, I haven't had anyone ever get mad. I've had a bunch of people come over and, and talk and ask, and and then some people come and watch, like what I what I do, and they're like, "Oh, it, it was that guy right there," or "It was oh, it was it was that girl," or or something, you know. Um, but no, I haven't really had any bad negative experiences. People are normally okay with me just sketching around. I mean, I wish I did have someone get mad at me. Then it would at least make a cool story. <laughs> no, I've had some people who are like, this was a long time ago, like, tag me on, tag me on Facebook or whatever I posted on. I'm like, oh, yeah. Or then I'll get people that are like, that doesn't look I've had I've had some people say, Oh, that doesn't look like me. I'm like, Well it's not necessarily supposed to look like you. This is you're just kind of the first inspirational pass type thing and but it's always pretty fun. Mostly people just try to ignore you because you're the weirdo in the corner drawing. <laughs> so But it would be fun to just go in and, like, have a bust that I'm just... <laughs> be fun. Do I ever feel bored or down about, oh, I missed it. Um, I missed that question. I'm going to have to try to find it. Um, do people ever ask for a screenshot? Yeah, people will take pictures of my drawing all the time. Uh, not I mean not all the time, but when when they do, they'll they'll normally like pull out their phones and take a picture of my tablet, of my iPad, because that's pretty normal. I actually like that. Then like I don't actually want to know any of these people. <laughs> I just <laughs> makes me sound like a horrible person. Um, no, but it's, it's mainly, I, I like, I really like, um, just doing it and trying to put myself and making up a story for people as I go. I think it's successful and, and helpful to, to live in someone, trying to live in someone else's mind is always fun. Um, no, I think the, I think one of the weirdest ones was because I used to sketch on a train because I would take a train to work and someone came up and saw me 
sketching people, and they're like, "You should go on America's Got t- on America's Got Talent." You know, you could just sit down and you could draw people in the audience. People would love it. Oh, people would be like, yeah. <laughs> I just thought that is a really funny thing to say to someone that you don't know. And a really probably a boring segment of America's Got Talent. But I thought, oh, maybe like it could just be more dramatic music. Just very dramatic music the whole time. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> And they add a bunch of cool sound effects. I think that would be uh, that would be fun. Save this version out. I'm going to jump up, maybe start blocking in the face a little bit more while we have some time.
a freaking cubed. How the hell are you? It's been way too long. Way too long. I am well. John Adams. Hmm. Um. I'm assuming... If you guys don't know who A cubed is, Ashley Adams the third. She is she is one of those amazing sculptors that blesses us with her presence uh, in making sweet awesome sculpts in three hours flat. Like this is my three hour work. I've got like a muddy mess. <laughs> Sir, what do you think the difference is between them? I keep missing these questions. I'm so sorry. Uh, let's see if I can if I can find it here. Uh, uh. I can't. Sorry. Can you ask that question again? Um, the third, you're at least the seven million. Okay, sure. You're probably realistically the seven millionth. Um. That's true. But you should all follow her. She does amazing, awesome stuff. And is quite the inspiration. She doesn't believe in UFOs, though. Which is concerning. Which makes me think that maybe that she's had a, a very traumatic experience with a UFO. Which is probably the real reason that she knows too much. Is that right? <laughs> so, sorry sometimes i like to make up things about people not sometimes all the time no they are out there the mysteries are out there you are you a bubble <laughs> <laughs> Good call. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I am the UFO. Okay, apparently Ashley is the UFO. So, no worries. <laughs> How are things going? Are you still up in the Canada? Are you forever going to be up in the Canada? There's lots of UFOs up in the Canada, they say. And I like to call it the Canada because I feel like it's more uh, official. You're up in the Canadas. Okay, the Canada, the Can the Canadianadas. Uh-huh. Or maybe worry. You know, they I hear actually one of my oh, that's not Canada. Never mind. One of my favorite UFO movies is not in Canada. <laughs> it, it's it's obviously not in Canada. It's a uh, in Alaska, which is kind of like Canada Junior. I'm sure Canada owned Alaska at some point. That sounds about right. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. Ashley just came off her stream today. You streamed today, didn't you? <laughs> oh, yes, America, Canada. Sure, they got 
the meese and the geese. <laughs> Hugo, uh, Matt Deer, <laughs> I'm heading off. But I'm really glad that you came back with the streams. And I hope you get some more uh, value feedback from you. Yes, of course. Yeah, and send me more stuff if, you, if you're looking for some feedback. I got nothing else I'm going to do. The Ken na 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 the Canadian crown. <laughs> the Canadian grandma, the canana na <laughs> That's really good. Um fun fact, I had a legit obsession with Canada as a as a as a young man <laughs> and this isn't like a new like I wasn't young <laughs> I mean I was I was in high school um, but like we had the Winter Olympics in Utah that year and for some reason the Canadian outfits were all the rage and like I <laughs> I went and I bought every damn Canada apparel thing that I could possibly have. Hey, we'll see you go. Thanks for coming by. Um, so I had a, can a Canada shirt, a Canada zip-up sweater that had this big Canada on the sides. It says Canada with a big white maple leaf on the front. I had the Canadian matching red velvet Canada but it wasn't a fedora it was like the golf the golf hats um it was I looked and I would wear the whole I would wear the whole thing kind of as a joke but also kind of seriously because I loved it um but never had there been anyone that had dressed so much like Canada before. It was really cool. <laughs> I'm sure there's an archive of it somewhere of how much I <laughs> how much I dressed in Canada where. So Canada's cool. I like Canada. I like Canada. <laughs> <laughs> you have more Canadian gear than most Canadians. <laughs> you don't have a single Canadian branded anything? Oh my gosh. I'm going to find exactly what I wore. This is going to be... Yeah, I had... <laughs> oh my gosh! I had, I wore this stuff. So I had, where's the, it was, where was it? It was basically, I wore this hat. I'm going to share some links here. So you guys are going to be really excited. I wore that, that hat. With, I think this jacket. <laughs> this is great. This is what the internet is for. So I looked pretty good. And then I had like a Canadian shirt underneath that. <laughs> but for some reason, I just thought it was really cool. I was like 16, probably. I was really cool. Guys, just trust me that I was really cool. Okay? I was really cool. <laughs> I was not.
You wore a shirt. My dad likely had his hands on. <laughs> he did? No way. He ro he he ran the stuff, the screen printing stuff. That is awesome. <laughs> I probably wore his shirts then. <laughs> Because I was so anything Canada, I had I had multiple Can Canadians shirts. I had the sweater, I had the hat, um, and I felt like I was awesome. And I was always so warm. That's really cool. Your dad does good work. <laughs> that is great. Oh, whoa. This is, this is why people are great. <laughs> Very small world. Does your, is that something your dad did for a lot? Is that like what he did? Was he a screen printer? Is that what he, he was doing? He made a very um, young fatty duck very happy. You should tell him that. Because that stuff, not only, okay, not only was like the Canadian stuff cool, or not, not only did I really like Canada, but it was by far the coolest Olympic gear that you could get. Yeah, he still is. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I'm sure it has, but that's that's really cool. Alexi, how's it going? Welcome to the party. I've got like five more minutes left, um, but an update of what I'm doing. I'm I'm making this this kid. This is just a concept that I've been drawing around with for the past. I think this is like two days. I've been drawing it around a little bit. Um, so I'm kind of just blocking this out right now and feeling shapes and stuff. So it's still very much a concept. Does it have a sense to buy your gum road about? I don't know. You can buy my gum road if you want. It's good. Um, oh, the base the character designs plus. Yeah. I, I cover some of this stuff. I go over in a lot more detail on kind of the why I'm doing stuff. Um, speaking of Gumroad, <laughs> shameless self-promotion. The Z I do, for those of you who've joined in and, and participated in this wonderful stream, thank you so much, that I teach Gumroad courses as well that I take a lot of time and, and I put a lot of effort into making them nice quality and content rich. Um, they're available at gumroad.com slash the, or slash Redbeard. Um, I do actually have a new tutorial coming out, I think in a week. It's all done filming. I'm just getting the marketing stuff all situated, but it's, about hard surface modeling and 3D printing. So this is all I'm going to show for now. Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, yes. It's very nice. Yeah, everything still applies, actually. Um, actually, I just released a new one. Uh, Al Alexi, about a few months, a couple months ago, that is a f just a revamp of my very first tutorial that I made that's with, I think it's in ZBrush 20, I think it's in ZBrush 2019 or 2018 at least. Um, sir, what do I think of the differences between animation and anime 3D characters? 
What do I think the difference between animation and anime 3D characters are? Um, just, uh, t it's just style. Like, they all have a unique, you know, anime has a very unique and specific style, a way of animation, and their the style is just different. Um, I think it just comes down to medium. It's just a medium of storytelling. So I, I really like some animes and some animes I don't care for and some animations I don't care for. Um, but it's just a way of telling stories. And I like seeing different mediums and ways to tell stories. Yes. Anyways, that's my shameful shell selfless plug. If you liked any of the stuff you saw tonight, feel free to check it out right there. Um, and if not, then that's cool too. We'll still be best friends and we'll have picnics together and maybe we'll hold hands. That'd be cool. I love holding hands. Holding hands is my favorite. Oh, thank you guys. Hey, can you guys hear this music? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, let's end on that. I don't know. <laughs> that was great. Uh, let's just end with that. Um, thank you so much for coming by tonight. This was fun. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> anyways, that's all, all I got for you. I'll, I'll just see you guys in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, thanks for coming by. Thanks for the comments. This has really been a lot of fun for me tonight. So take care and get some rest or enjoy your day. <laughs> hey, Ashley, we'll see you. Let's, let's talk again soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, we'll see you guys.